Hey, what's up friends? Edouce Ness here from The Mimic Method. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through the new curriculum, the new revision of my methodology that I've been putting together. I'm gonna to be launching a new cohort of one-on-one -on -one coaching students. So I'm doing this in preparation for that. But whether or not you participate in that, you'll benefit from kind of seeing my big picture, how I look at the language learning process and what the sequence of steps a person needs to get to starting from nothing to be able to flow in conversation with native speakers of another language. So before all I coach people in, or all we had content for rather, was for hearing and pronunciation. And recently I've been developing techniques and a method for practicing conversation as well. And I wanted to kind of give you a big picture sense of how I come up with these things in the first place. The way I kind of approach any problem is the first question I ask is like, what is there? Like what exactly is the thing that we're dealing with here? And when it comes to communication, the way I look at it is there's basically two things fundamentally, movement and meaning. So right now I'm just moving my body and you are perceiving those movements with your eyes and your ears in a way that creates meaning in your mind. And what the English language is, is just a system for communicating meaning between people through movements, right? That's all language is fundamentally. Therefore, what you need to learn, if you, need to, if you want to learn a new system, a new language, you need to be able to do those movements and then do them the way that communicates the meanings that you want to communicate, right? So there's mimicking movements and then mimicking the way people make meaning with those movements. That's all language learning is, movement, meaning, mimicry, right? So with that in mind, we can break things down even further. So the next question you ask is, cool, well, how do I break down the movements of language? Well, in my program, we cover face, hands, and body language, but Going to the real thing, the movements that make sound are these speech producing movements. And on this slide here, I have like what you might interpret as me saying phonological awareness is key, right? That's the meaning you're interpreting from these movements. But at the movement layer, you're basically looking at three different subcategories of movement. You have the first, the airflow dynamics. So air is being pressed out of my lungs and then that creates pressure, flow. Then as it passes out of my lungs, it goes through my vocal tract and that creates this vibration, which creates the hmm, mm, right? And that where the melody of speech is being created at the voice. And then after it passes through my vocal tract, it goes into my oral tract and my nasal passage. And then this is where I articulate that sound to make all my consonants and my vowels. Phonological awareness is key. So putting this all together, phonological awareness is key. And then I have my melody. And then I have my airflow. Right. So this is the movement layer. These are three things. Airflow, melody, articulation. And then when you look at what's happening when we're dealing with the conversation layer, you might be thinking, oh, there's grammar and all that kind of stuff. The way I think about conversation, more broadly speaking, is you're entering into a situation. You're entering into a real world scenario where there's other human beings and they're making movements with their bodies and you're making movement with your body and everything is in context and you need to just adapt yourself to that context and know how things work. So in training that adaptation, you, your goal is to be able to flow in the real world, right? But the complexity of the real world is too much for you when you first start. If I just drop you into like the middle of a market in some foreign country where you don't know anything, you'll probably be overwhelmed by all the stuff going on. So we need to dial it back. And the most basic types of games or activities you can do are imitation games. So that's where we sit you down and Someone's like, hola, hola, donde estas, donde estas? Or even more basic than that, you'll be imitating just the way the melody sounds. Como estas mi amigo? No, 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 Right? So this is the imitation games. 
Um, that's where you start off with. Then once you get imitation games, is basically you just getting the moves. You're just kind of getting the moves in your body. Then you practice actually interacting with someone with those moves. That's what we call conversation games in my method. I'll go deeper into that later. But basically, conversation game is something I created to give people the most simplest form of live interaction with you and another person. And so there you're using these moves in a basic way so you can just get the flow of you know, responding and perceiving things in the moment and improvising on the fly. And then we have simulation games. And this is basically great. Now that you can interact and make the movements, let's place you in a scenario outside of the real world, but maybe you and your practice partner kind of imagine yourself in a market, imagine yourself in a situation where you're discussing the weather, whatever it may be, and then you simulate that experience and rehearse it over and over again until you've been able to manage it and work it out. And then once you've simulated enough scenarios, then you can go into the real world and find that scenario and then act it out. And basically what learning is, is being able to expand the range of situations in the real world that you are able to kind of just automatically and intuitively flow in, AKA you're able to perceive the movements and native speakers comprehension and respond with your own movements in a um, socially fluent and acceptable way. Okay. So, this is basically the conversation process at the most basic level. And then this is the pronunciation and hearing process at the most basic level. This is what you're here to do. When you're here to learn a language, what you're really trying to do is learn how to move your airflow, your voice and your oral and your mouth the same way as natives do. And then being able to do that in the context of the real world in a way that's fitted to the environment. All right, so that's the basic big picture of how I think about what language learning is. Therefore, if these are the pieces, my job as a coach is to guide you through a sequence of steps that get you to learn those things, to internalize those abilities. So now I'm gonna show you the draft outline for the new curriculum that I'm putting together. And I'll just kind of quickly run through this and you can just kind of get a sense of what the experience would be like if you were doing coaching in this method. So in the introduction, we kind of we give you important concepts. A big concept of my program is the difference between the hemispheres and your brain. And one hemisphere is handling more of these kind of intuitive, you know, live, fast interactions, while the other one's much more analytical. So being able to use both, whereas conventional methods will overtrain your left hemisphere and leave you not able to flow in the live moment. So you'll learn about the differences between the conventional approaches that everyone does and how, what we do and why it's better. Flow channel is a big important concept because it's about always knowing what your level of skill is and matching the challenge and task to that level. And then here I just get an overview of the program. So introduction, you get a feel for what we're here to do. Then we go into imitation games. And oh, before I proceed, I wanna kinda of get some more context on this. So historically, like I mentioned already, I only created courses for people to master their hearing and pronunciation. But of course, people kept asking, oh, I want a course so I can get better at speaking. So I'm like, fine, let me figure out how to do that. So I started doing a conversation coaching and developed a methodology for that. And then up until now, those two things were kind of separate. So you'd, you'd learn the pronunciation for several weeks or months here, and then you do the conversation method over here. Um, but what I found is that you, you need these things to be holistically integrated to get the best results. And so what, I, what this project is I'm doing now is great. You can only do one thing at a time. So how do we actually sequence a merger of pronunciation training and conversation training? So you're doing both at the same time, but going in the right order. So that's what you're looking at right now. So I have to start off with then is imitation games. So here there's a series of games or activities that we've come up with that are designed to help you stimulate and reactivate that deeper part of your brain that is involved with mimicry, perception. What happens is you get older and that part kind of atrophies and puts set aside. So to learn a new language, you need to reawaken it. And we do it step by step, we flow channel it. So first we do stuff with the face 
I point to your attention all the movements of the face because that's super important. And then some people, some parts of the face are just like turned off and you're not even aware of it. So you'll learn that in this section. Then we move into body movement um, with your shoulders and you'll have activities where you're watching a video or working with a native speaker and you're just doing activities to mimic their body, mimic their face, mimic how their hands are moving, mimic how their voice is going. Um, so putting all four of these together, you'll be sitting here imagining with your practice partner and they're kind of like, hmm, 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 and you're like, hmm, hmm, hmm. And it's a fun game, but it's super important because we get serious about doing it precise. And the process of getting better and better at that opens you up to learning languages way faster because this is the fundamentals. And then putting that all together, we have uh, rhythm and spirit. Rhythm is kind of like the, the, the timing and energy and patterns of your movements. So being able to perceive how some people kind of move like this while other people kind of move like this. And so it's really fun stuff when you get into it. Spirit puts it all together into the actual energy. The way you should really think about what your job is as a language learner is you're trying to channel the spirit of the people because these guys here are speaking Spanish and they're like, hola, que tal amigo, que estas haciendo, no sé, por qué. And there's, a, there's an energy, there's a spirit that's different from the spirit of your native culture. So in order for you to flow with those people, you need to be able to channel that spirit. And you channel that by tuning the fine motor details of your body to call it in. So that's what all this is about. When you can speak from that place of spirit, that's where fluency comes in. That's where intuition and automaticity comes in and ease. Whereas if you do anything intellectual, you'll never, you'll never get there. Uh, and then environment here, I talk about setting up a learning environment for yourself, like with music and radio and, and how to engage that environment so that you're kind of constantly improving and being saturated by the language. So great. Imitation games, that's the foundations. How do you actually mimic? This is the mimic method, you know, fundamental here. Now, here you're just kind of going off of what you already have. And as you see, this is from our conversation curriculum. Now we get into the pronunciation stuff. So here we actually go into detail on how exactly are those vocal melodies being produced. So you do a series of techniques we develop to help you really fine tune your hearing. It's almost like a music, like the way a training a musician would do. So you can really hear the pitch because what happens is a native speaker might say, um, bonjour les amis, and then that, that melody is but then uh, an American tries to mimic that and they're like, dun, 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 dun. so they're doing a different melody because you're just kind of too much in your native patterns of melody. So here we break that down and open you up and then you won't hear things at first. Then you keep doing it. Like, oh, snap. I hear all these things now. So this kind of opens up the hearing at a, at a fine grain level. So vocal melody, we go through these techniques, syncing, shadowing, listening, and this is super important. Melody is the most underrated, underappreciated aspect of language learning. It doesn't just make you sound more native. It really is the key to tapping you into the spirit of the language. I find when I get people to really tap into melody, everything else in the communication just explodes for that reason. So that's why I put it front matter here because this really gets you in. Another kind of argument for that case is think about children who are learning a language, their first language. This is what they start with. They start with babbling. What they're doing is they're doing the melody without having the articulation figured out yet, right? So we're going to copy what babies do because it works. Um, then we go to conversation game. And you can watch other videos where I, I think on my channel where I talk about this. I won't go in detail now, but what it basically looks like um, is you are doing a basic interaction on the certain rules we've mapped out where I'm like, you eat cheeseburgers. I eat cheeseburgers. I don't eat cheeseburgers. I eat french fries. You eat french fries? No, you don't eat french fries. She eats french fries. She eats french fries? No, no, no. We eat french fries. So you're kind of responding to what the person gives you and the goal is to be as fast and as smooth as possible. So it's a very simple game, but it can get more and more complex. And this is the... Uh, this is a hyper effective game for developing any aspect of your speech, your grammar, your speaking patterns, getting rid of your, so smoothing is a big thing here. A lot of people will tolerate having lots of ums and ahs in their speech, 
you'll be speaking Spanish, but then you'll throw in English words like like and yeah. So you want to eliminate all that stuff as soon as possible. And then you, f you figure out how to speed things up and then how to infuse it with the spirit of the people. And so here you're, it's, it's kind of a, a way to practice live interaction with all of the right habits. And it's super important to get this foundation. So that's why I put this early on, even before you get to any more of the deeper pronunciation details. So by now, you're really tuned in to the mel melodic layer of speech, which allows you to kind of tap in, understand more, and mimic more. Then now you're learning the conversation game. If you're a new student, you get this kind of basic stack of vocabulary that you're also integrating in this area. And now you can just have this kind of fun interaction with a native speaker. Um, to get that language living within you. Then we start to dial it in on your hearing your pronunciation even more. And we go into oral articulation. What are the, the vowels and consonants? But even before that, you need to become aware of the, the musculature and control your tongue, your lips, your larynx, your velum, um, the tactile sensations on your tongue in your palate and the other parts of your mouth, uh, the palate, which is the, the top of your mouth. And so what you're doing here is you're just becoming aware of your speech instrument because if your job is to move your body parts in a different way, you first need to be able to become aware of those body parts because if you've never done this before, you are completely oblivious to the kinesthetic and tactile sensations here because you've been doing it your whole life and it just goes deep in your unconscious. But you can unearth it into your conscious awareness, and then this is the secret to being able to pick up a language quickly because now you actually know how to use the instrument. So then once you know how to become aware of the instrument, then you, for your given language, you dial in on all the vowel sounds, all the consonant sounds, and then we kind of ground it all with a set of uh, symbols that's mostly based on the International Phonetic Alphabet, however, with some modifications that I've made to um, suit our purposes here as language learners, right? So here, after, so in the meantime, while you go through this, you're still gonna be practicing the conversation game with a practice partner and getting smoother, expanding your vocabulary, getting more confident, but then you'll be doing this at the same time. So whenever you, for example, ask your practice partner, how do you say this word or what's the definition of this, then and you mimic it, you'll be mimicking with more and more precision because you'll start to notice these vowels like, oh yeah, I've been saying it this way, but now it's this way. And going back to what I was saying before bef about how I sequence things, I used to have you just focus only on pronunciation for all the way to the bottom before you focus on conversation. Um, but the problem with that is that there's no context. You're just kind of learning words and sounds outside of the real world context. And what's good is that when you're in context, in this basic context of the basic conversation game, and you're when you're working with somebody, then you're, you're mispronouncing things for sure, but now you're getting all these reps in, you're hearing the native speaker say stuff, and like you're, you're seeding your, your unconscious mind with these patterns. So then now you already have like a few hours of training, and then you come and you learn some you know obscure vowel that no one knows about unless you do my programs, and then you're like, Oh yeah, I know that vowel. I've heard that in my sessions. So all of a sudden it's way easier to move through this section because you now have this unconscious reservoir of experience with the language already. So that actually, that's why I mean when I'm trying to holistically integrate things so that they can kind of mutually reinforce each other, the, the pronunciation side and the conversation side. Great, so after this you have a really deep, you just know all of the vowels and consonants you still have to practice them, but you'll also have this to keep practicing them with, and you'll be doing imitation games as well in your workflow to practice with. Now moving on, the next step is these uh, situations, or I call them simulation now, simulation games. So basically, I won't go deep here, but you have the real world, but it's broken down to a bunch of situations. And you can more broadly break down those situations and the situations where you are expressing yourself as I'm doing right now. I'm just talking and monologuing. Um, or say you're, you right now, you're engaging and listening to me in a real conversation. That would also involve you like interjecting and asking questions or you know, driving the situation somewhere. But when you're the engager, 
you're not the one talking, you're the one kind of listening and asking questions. So there's little details on how to do that. And then interacting is when it's a back and forth, like when you are, you know, ordering food at a restaurant or doing some sort of back and forth transaction. So these are two basic categories or three basic categories of situations, each with their own details to them. So you'll practice with your practice partner these situations and learn how to master them. And essentially, like I mentioned already, your goal as a language learner is to expand the number of situations and for which you know how to flow. You know the vocabulary, you know how to um, do the different social cues and whatnot. So here, you learn that process. And you know you don't learn every situation in this, in this section. You just learn the basic gist of how to master a situation. And then continuing on, you will just apply that same process to keep expanding your domain of mastery. Right. Now coming back to these pronunciation details, segmenting um, is when you take speech and break it down into smaller recognizable parts. So you have chunking. If I have a phrase like, um, yeah, yeah, amigo, está fazendo o quê? Right. I can break that down into chunks. Yeah, yeah, amigo, está fazendo o quê? Or I can break that down even more chunks. Yeah, yeah, amigo, está fazendo o quê? Right, so that's chunking. Then I can break those chunks down into their like separate notes. Yeah, yeah, amigo. Yeah, yeah, amigo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So this is how you kind of like chop up the reality of speech, so you can kind of hold it in your mind more effectively and make use of your auditory memory capacity. Then you chunk things down into syllables. E a i a mi gu ta fa zen du u ke phonemes ta fa zen du ta t a fa f a zen z an du d u. So that's segmenting. And then rhymes is well, you know, it's fun. You work with different rhymes. The, the value of rhyming and getting a sequence of words that rhyme is it allows you to kind of see a phoneme or a sound structure in different contexts and it organizes the sound system in your brain more pristinely and for a better fluency and access to it. All right, so that's what segmenting is. Very powerful stuff. Um, these techniques we created here, you do this and then all of a sudden like you see the matrix of speech and sound, um, which allows you to mimic way more effectively. Then here we talk about our process for grammar intuition. There's nothing here right now, but what I'm creating, and I'll talk about that in a later video, is a series of audio materials and workflows. You do audio materials for you to ingrain the grammar patterns and then activities and games to do with a practice partner to ingrain them in your speaking. So that's what... And that therefore is grammar intuition. So you're not learning the theory of grammar like, oh, in third person past participles, you need to drop the AR and replace it unless it's a stem changing, like all that kind of nonsense. You don't need to know. You just need to be able to intuitively bust out the right pattern. So I have a process for uh, adapting you to the grammar so it's in your intuition and not bouncing around in your intellect where you get overstuck and overthinking. Then the flowing section, this is now the kind of culmination of all the pronunciation layers. You put it all together. Um, you learn about airflow mechanics to the stage. You do a technique called pressure parsing, which I discussed at the end of my last video. Uh, you'll memorize a song lyric and then learn the process for memorizing lyrics because it's a very useful thing to do to get natural speech in your muscle memory that you can practice from memory whenever. Uh, with these abilities, you now practice mimicking and imitating full speech and as and expanding your capacity to do that and then also i'm just gonna throw in there some um freestyle i have like a freestyle course and how to like freestyle rap in a language and that kind of is the ultimate level of flow mastery in a language in my opinion so i'll talk you through it's much simpler than you think and even if you're a beginner you can do a lot so i'll, I'll show you that process here um and then now to kind of wrap it all up transcription and input so transcription is a process of taking speech and putting it into a written form. We have a special convention that, again, I discussed in the last video. And when you learn how to transcribe using our convention, it just 
blows up your listening comprehension, your capacity to understand native accented speech. When they speak fast, they blend all the words together. Transcription is the answer. And um, so you'll learn how to do that and what the workflow is for getting better and better at that. Um, and then also taking an input. So watching content and as a way to expand your listening comprehension and your vocab. That's what I call deciphering. We have a workflow here where you transcribe into the sounds. And then on top of that, you transcribe the words and the meanings. And then this process is just a really effective way for expanding your comprehension as well as your um, vocabulary, which you can then feed back into your conversation practice. And yeah, and then once you have all these techniques and everything down, you won't be fluent. You'll be pretty conversational probably at this point, but you'll have all of the things you need to become fluent. Or put another way, I like to see my role as a coach or as a creator of methods to not teach you a language because only you can go out there and learn and do the work. My job is to remove all the barriers that are preventing you, that are blocking your natural flow of progress. So after going through that curriculum, we've removed all the blockages in your hearing and pronunciation, removed all the blockages in your speaking and your understanding habits. So now it's up to you to go out there and just keep practicing in the real world and with a practice partner and you know input, taking in information. Um, so, you, so the last section, I kind of give you a workflow or a routine you can go through. And you know it's working if every day you're just getting better. You're just getting more fluent naturally at the language. Therefore, you just got to keep doing it. And eventually, you'll be flowing with everybody. And then you can do your next language, right? So that is the process. Uh, if you enjoyed it, then like, subscribe. If you have any questions on it, ask me in the comments. I'll try to get to it. And... Yes, next week I'll be opening up registration for people to sign up with our new cohort of one-on-one -on -one students. I'll be doing a special offer that I can tell you about later. So if you're interested in working with me, my team, and going through this process I laid out for you, then stay subscribed, join my mailing list to find out, and like always, keep flowing. That's my new outro.